Nearly two months after the historical flight of Ship 25 and Booster 9 lifted off from the Boca Chica, Texas test site, Elon Musk finally revealed exactly why SpaceX blew the lid off of the Starship in the latest company All Hands Talk. Back in December, SpaceX's latest Starship test took place, and while it saw the rocket successfully lift off and complete stage separation, the rest of the test saw both the first and second stages explode at different times and far away from each other. Surprisingly, Musk shared details about the second stage's explosion, revealing that the cause of the anomaly was SpaceX itself. He outlined that during liftoff, SpaceX had fully filled the Starship's second stage with liquid oxygen and methane. Once the firm tried to vent this oxygen during flight, the Starship's second stage exploded, explained the executive. The reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen, and the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion, because we, we wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. <laughs> Flying Starship's second stage with the weight to represent a payload was necessary for SpaceX's December 2nd Starship test flight since it had to test the correct thrust specifications for liftoff and stage separation. A lighter rocket requires less power whenever engines are involved. For test launches, depending on the objectives, it has to match flight specifications to ensure performance at the correct requirements. This means that when SpaceX launched Ship 25, it was destined for the prototype to end in flames. In the future, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. And so I think we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with Flight 3 and then a rapid cadence to achieve full and rapid reusability. Sadly, Musk did not disclose the reason for the lower stage explosion, but according to many sources, the potential Booster 9 damage was caused by the fuel inside the booster to the engine's fuel supply line. This damage halts the fuel flow, resulting in the aforementioned issue. To better understand this, let's utilize visualization images generated by computational fluid dynamics technology, we extend our gratitude to the space engineer team for their tremendous efforts in creating these images, which make it easier for everyone to visualize the impact of fuel sloshing. Returning to the issue, just before the engine cut off at T plus 239, there was minimal remaining fuel in both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks, approximately 10%. Despite the significant empty space in the tanks, the fuel remained pooled at the tank's bottom due to acceleration as the booster engines propelled it forward. However, at T plus 239, the outer and middle engines ceased operation, leaving only the three inner gimbal engines active. By T plus 244, the second stage engines initiated, exerting force at the top of the booster, reducing its thrust. While the three Raptor engines continued to push the booster, their thrust countered the direction of the exhaust thrust created by the six engines in the second stage. As a consequence, the booster's thrust momentarily opposed the initial flight direction, causing a brief slowdown. During this interval, the fuel, influenced by inertia, splashed in the direction of the initial flight, akin to how our bodies lurch forward in a car when it decelerates suddenly. The remaining fuel splashed freely into the empty space due to this motion. Around T plus 250, the other Raptor gimbal engines were activated, gradually restoring power and thrust to the booster, initiating its acceleration again. However, the booster's thrust countered the movement of the weightless fuel that had just previously splashed. Both the fuel tank and the fuel inlet were previously under immense pressure from tons of fuel. The continuous generation of opposing forces resulted in severe sloshing of the fuel against the fuel supply lines. Additionally, the intense vibrations caused the fuel to create numerous gas bubbles, significantly impacting crucial components such as fuel supply lines, turbines, fuel inlets, and pre-combustion elements. These forces were potent enough to cause damage to the engine systems, particularly vulnerable structures like the pipes. The impact of the second stage's exhaust, combined with the sued and forceful movement of the fuel, 
potentially led to the creation of fuel air bubbles that might have entered the engine's fuel supply line, causing damage to the engine itself. Subsequently, this damage propagated to other components, eventually resulting in the successive shutdown of the engines about half a minute later. This disruption thwarted the planned landing process, compelling SpaceX to activate the self-destruct sequence to terminate the booster's journey around T plus 320. We believe that SpaceX will not let these mistakes occur in the next flights. In short, space travel, as has been said again and again and again, is hard. And SpaceX knows that as well as anyone following a build fast, fly fast, fail fast and fly again R&D model that has today made it one of the world's leading launch providers. I mean, the, kind of the mind-blowing thing is like there is an actual path that we are on to make life multiplanetary. Can you friggin' believe that? Like well, imagine a universe in which one million human beings have constructed a high-tech civilization on Mars and are living out their lives on the red planet, 225 million kilometers from Earth. If Elon Musk's dream comes true, this will be our universe within the next 100 years. As early as 2040, Musk hopes to have thousands or tens of thousands of people living in a city-like colony on Mars. From there, he hopes to continue to increase the colony's size until it exceeds one million people, at which point he believes there will be a sufficient number of people to recreate the entire industrial base, resulting in a sustainable civilization on Mars. Now you might ask, why in the world would he want to do that? The answer is complex and multifaceted, but here's the short version. To ensure the long-term continuation of our species and our earthly evolutionary branch, Musk is betting on Mars, where no human has ever traveled, as a safe haven in the case that a catastrophic event assails the Earth. Though this is a scientific inevitability, such an event isn't predicted for far into the future. In a billion years, for instance, a swelling sun will scorch our food chain, boil our oceans, and extinguish life on Earth as we know it. And this is the optimistic version of impending Armageddon, writes Aeon's Ross Anderson, barring a more sudden end in the form of a cosmic collision or supernova shockwave. Musk also takes it as an irksome sign that other life forms in the universe have never been identified. Maybe we're in a lab and there's some advanced alien civilization that's just watching how we develop, out of curiosity, like mold in a petri dish. Or alternately, he suggests, it could be that there are a whole lot of dead one-planet civilizations. Either way, in order to increase humanity's chances of survival, Musk is taking a decidedly proactive stance in championing interplanetary travel, and he's somewhat hopeful. Though we are still in the infancy of space travel, he says, at our current rate of technological growth, humanity is on a path to be godlike in its capabilities. But even still, once we've arrived, the picture of colonial life on Mars looks rather bleak with deadly climates, even in a spacesuit, Colonists would likely live underground in wanderless caves where homesickness, anarchy, cannibalism, or a whole host of other communal breakdowns could soon set in. That said, Musk said he would only take the voyage to Mars himself provided I could be confident that my death wouldn't result in the primary mission of the company falling away. After all, the way he sees it, it's a mission in which the very fate of humanity is hanging delicately in the balance. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.